Hello everyone, I am Dr. Rajakumar Guduru, Assistant Professor of English, NIT Warangal. I welcome you all for the second episode on right words. Well, in the first episode, we have seen how important words are in communication. We, are, we have also seen that there are different aspects of learning word. In other words, aspects of vocabulary knowledge. You remember there are eight aspects of word knowledge we have talked about? Good. And later we have seen that antonyms, synonyms, homonyms and one word substitutions. So we have also seen the importance of right words. So these are the few things that we have seen in the first epi episode and in the next episode or in this episode we are going to look at some of the techniques or strategies of learning new words and then we also look into the some of the ways and means of learning new words and later we will also look into some how to use a dictionary well in learning new words and later we will look into some of the examples or assignments okay with more examples we will do some of the activities to brush up our knowledge and to gain perfection in learning antonyms synonyms or homonyms and one word substitutions well let's look into some of the guidelines for learning to use words correctly in order to improve our ability to choose words uh, to choose the best words and most effective words whether we are communicating orally or in writing we should keep in mind the following first one is purchase a good dictionary for example the oxford advanced learners dictionary or the collins cobell dictionary or cambridge advanced learners dictionary uh, and then use them it's not just enough that we purchase when I ask the learners, they say that, yes, we have Oxford Advanced Learners Dictionary or Collins Kerbel Dictionary or Cambridge Advanced Learners Dictionary. Number of them will raise their hands. But it's not just enough that they have uh, dictionaries. But when I ask them, do you really use them? The answer is no. So it's not just enough to possess dictionaries, but effective use of them will help you or enhance you learning new words. Keep that in mind. And the second thing is purchase a book of synonyms and antonyms. Very important. Uh, such as Roget's uh, International Thesaurus uh, and then use it. It's a very well-known book. Okay, you may buy it if you want it. And the third one is always take into an account a word's possible connotations before you use it. And if those connotations don't seem appropriate for your intended audience, purpose, or subject matter, it's best to find a more appropriate word. Words have connotative meaning and denotative meaning. A denotative meaning is the exact meaning. Okay, the meaning as it is. A connotation is the intended meaning. Okay, how we understand what the author is intended to convey. So please keep in mind that a denotative meaning is different from a connotative meaning. A denotative meaning is as it is, a connotation is intended meaning. It's very important to see the differences. And the next one is select specific and precise words, okay, instead of general or abstract ones. For example, words like thing, factor, aspect, individual, etc. are imprecise. Okay? Don't make the reader guess about what you are referring. State it clearly and precisely. Don't give a sort of ambiguity. Don't uh, give a room for ambiguity when you're writing, when you're speaking for the audience. Audience shouldn't think that, oh, it's very general. We are not able to get the intended meaning. When we, view, when we use a precise word, then it's very, uh, very easy for the audience to understand and grasp the meaning. Okay? That uh, uh, avoids a sort of ambiguity. And finally, make sure you are using the right word. 
okay? Uh, not one that's similar in spelling, but means something else entirely. For instance, don't say detract if you mean distract. Detract means lessen or reduce. Dis distract means uh, sidetrack or divert. Okay? So there is a possibility of uh, mistaking one for the other here when they sound uh, similar or when the spelling is almost similar. Therefore, we have to be very careful when we use these sort of uh, uh, words because the meaning can go wrong. So keep these uh, five things in mind in order to uh, help you, in order to help yourselves to uh, achieve or in order to learn new words uh, every day or uh, day by day. Okay, that will really help you. Let's look into some of the uh, hints on gathering and studying words. Okay, it's a very uh, important session. I want you to pay attention to this. We are talking about different levels of stages in the first episode. Do you remember? Research proves that there are different levels of vocabulary for different levels of learners at different stages. So, firstly, at elementary stages, it is quite important for one to choose which words one is going to study. Okay? The focus is very important. Which words? And if one, one tries to learn too many words, it is easy to forget them soon or get confused with them. So one should not be over ambitious uh, when learning words. You're thinking that just put the dictionary before him and then uh, reading it from, uh, from the beginning to the end. It's too, don't, let's not be too ambitious when it comes to learning words. Okay? Uh, it only uh, confuses us and then we soon forget them. We end up that way. Uh, it would be better to limit the number of words to five to six, five or six, and learn them thoroughly, then try to learn 15 to 20 words at one go. That is the ideal way of learning. First, you target, just start with the five to six words, learn them completely, and then if you still want to learn more, maybe maximum 15 to 20. So you have to pitch it at that level. The target must be these many words. You complete them, then you go into another set of words. Otherwise, you forget them or you'll get confused. There's no point in, in learning that way. And uh, it is good to employ certain techniques while studying new words effectively. Okay? Studying words means employing new ways of techniques. New ways and new techniques. It's very, very crucial. The following techniques suggested by Louis et al. 2004, how one records or remembers the new words, encounters new words. Okay, Louis suggests some of the techniques uh, to record and remember new words. Let's look into them. Well, there are few ways to record new words. What are they? Number one is word plus translation. Some learners uh, easily remember that uh, uh, immediately when he looks at a new word, immediately he translates into his mother tongue. And then he remembers it for long. So that's one way of doing it. And some learners remember word plus picture. It's a very effective uh, means of, it's a very effective technique. Some learners, when they, look, when they encounter a new word, immediately they visualize and then they, they pictureize. They imagine a picture and then they associate a picture with the word and then they don't forget it. And the next two, another uh, technique is like word plus spelling. Some learners are very good at spelling. Therefore, they uh, try to associate words meaning with spelling and they remember. And other techniques like word plus and example sentence. Immediately when you find a new word, some learners make, they know the meaning and then immediately write a they use this particular word in a new sentence and they remember it. Another technique is that word plus definition in English. Immediately they look at the word, 
they refer to dictionary and they learn the definition and they remember it. And word plus pronunciation, some people find it uh, very strange or some people find it very, very interesting pronunciation of a, a new word that they have encountered. And therefore, when they recall later that part, what, the meaning of the particular word, and they try to associate its meaning with the pronunciation, the strange pronunciation, or an odd pronunciation, or sort of interesting pronunciation, and they try to recall the meaning. And in another way of uh, recording a new word is that word plus opposite or synonym. Immediately when he looks at a word, he uh, tries to uh, think about or think of an opposite word or a synonym or an antonym or a synonym immediately. So he tries to associate this way and therefore he remembers it for a long time. And the next technique is word plus the text it came from. The text it came from. Word plus the text it came from. Immediately when the learner encounters uh, in a particular story or in a particular paragraph in an interesting uh, uh, context, immediately he goes back to that context and tries to recall the meaning of the word when he encounters the same word uh, uh, in the next time. So these are the some ways uh, to recall new words. Now, after choosing words to study, we said that uh, select words to study. Okay, some of the words you, you I told you some time ago that target a certain number of words, not all the words. Okay, once we select certain number of words to learn them. Okay, now what bothers most of the learners, most of the second language learners, is that uh, the question, how to study them. How should we study them? This is the question which mostly bothers the second language learners. There are plenty ways to study words. Some of them are active and some of them are very passive. Okay, now let's look into 16 ways of studying new words. Okay, let's uh, look into some of the 16 ways of studying new words. Shall we look into them one by one? Okay, well the first one is underlining or highlighting words in a text. When, uh, when we are reading an interesting story or a text, you know, when you encounter a, a new word, what some people do is immediately they highlight it. Okay, they highlight it or they underline it. That is one way of, uh, you know, uh, studying a word. Uh, next one is using a dictionary to find the meaning of a word. Once you underline the word, next one is immediately you keep a dictionary by, by, the, by your side and refer to dictionary and learn the meaning of the word then and there. The third thing is using pictures and diagrams in the, in the text to help. Meanings sometimes come through the pictures that, that are given in the text itself. They may not be explicitly, uh, the meanings may not be explicitly given in the text, but implicitly in the form of figures, in the form of diagrams, yeah, in the form of uh, sort of uh, uh, scenery or whatever. That particular picture illustrates the meaning of the new world. You have to be very careful to uh, grasp that particular uh, meaning of the word from that figure or uh, picture. Okay, so that is the third thing. What is the third thing? The third thing is using pictures and diagrams in the text to help. The fourth one is keeping word lists and reading through them regularly. How do we study words? Some of the, even I do sometimes, you know what I do? I make a uh, when I read a text, I make a small chit. I, I make a list of words, difficult words and their meanings and their pronunciations, and I keep them in my pocket. And wherever I go, I just take it, read it, and keep it in my pocket. And again, I read it and keep it. So I make a list of words, difficult words, and refer to them again and again whenever I feel like. So the more often I uh, expose myself, the more, more repeatedly I look at them and learn them, I remember them, and then they become part and parcel of my communication, my vocabulary. So the fourth one is keeping word lists and reading through them regularly. And fifth one is using a vocabulary workbook to do exercises. There are a number of vocabulary workbook exercises 
there are a number of vocabulary books in the market. You can buy according to your level. First of all, you have to know what is your level. Is your level elementary level, intermediate level, or advanced level? Find out what level you belong to, and then buy books, and then start doing exercises. That will help you. Okay, sixth way of uh, uh, studying a word, words is that organizing new vocabulary in mind uh, through mind maps or tables. Okay, so when we encounter a new word, we have to just draw a sort of mind map uh, associated to that and then we remember it. Okay, and the seventh one is collecting examples of new words such as tickets, advertisements, letters, and realia. When we encounter a new word, we collect uh, example uh, sentences or example things that, that represent to this, the meaning of this particular word uh, in the form of things and then we keep them and then we try to learn or study them. And uh, eighth one is carrying cards with new words on them in your pockets. Okay, cards. I was talking about uh, some time ago lists, but this time I'm talking about cards where you add some more extra information about the words and then keep them in your pocket ready and then study them. And ninth one is repeating new words to yourself many times. Okay, when you learn a new word, I, you keep thinking about it. Okay, uh, you keep thinking, you study right now and after one hour you remember it. What is that particular word I, I've come across? Or you remember it. And after two hours and the next day and after three days, like that. So it's better to uh, recall it uh, now and then so that you remember better. The tenth way of studying a word is learning a poem or a song with a new vocabulary in it. Okay, this is a very effective uh, ways of learning new words. Suppose you, if you uh, take one song or a poem, you encounter a number of new words. Okay, you come across a number of new words in it, and then it's very easy for us because they all at one place. Okay, you can pick and choose what words, what are the that particular words you want to learn. Okay, the words that interest you in that poem. So you can always uh, sing the song or learn. Uh, uh, learn to recite the poem in the process you uh, a number of times repeatedly you come across these words and then try to remember the meaning and the next one is labeling items with their names in English for example uh, in the kitchen it's a wonderful example when I visited my friend's kitchen he has labeled uh, uh, certain items or certain kitchen ingredients with uh, with a with a tag Okay, so I could learn, I had a chance to, I had an opportunity to learn some of the ingredients, which I never knew before. So, like that, suppose we don't know some of the ingredients, some of the names of items, so just you find the name of the item, just label it. So whenever you go into the kitchen, you have an opportunity to uh, learn that particular item, so you won't forget it. Okay, uh, that's one way of learning. Next one is asking someone to explain a word to you. Suppose you are traveling and you are reading on the newspaper, uh, you come across a new word immediately, the next to you there is a person or your friend, you can ask him, what, 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 what does he think about the, what, what he could um, tell you or what he could suggest you the meaning of the word. So that's one way of asking friends, it's, there's nothing wrong in asking them. Uh, the next one is asking a, a friend to test you. Okay, you could uh, inform him that you are studying a number of words and after a week or so, you can uh, ask him to test you on this particular, on this particular words or this set of words. Uh, you can conduct a small test and then you can mm, test yourself. Okay, that's one way of uh, studying words. Uh, another way of studying words is that guessing the meaning of the word in context before checking with the dictionary. Some of us are very good at, you know, immediately uh, going into the dictionary. That's not a good idea. When we come across a new word, what we're supposed to do is we're supposed to guess the meaning of the word first. We, we should try to guess the meaning of the word from the context. We should be aware of the context and within the context, we will be able to understand. If we think about it, if we make our own guesses, even if we don't get the exact meaning, somewhere we will reach the, the similar meaning you know, we could come up with. 
Therefore, the good thing is that um, immediately when you encounter a new word, try to guess the meaning of the word. If you are still not happy with it, then you can refer to the dictionary. Okay? And the next one is writing paragraphs using new vocabulary. You have learned a, few, a couple of words some time ago and then using that try to compose a small poem or a, a, write a short paragraph uh, or uh, write your own experience or a picnic okay then you uh, remember them because all the words you are recalling and putting them together and that becomes you know uh, an exercise for you to remember them the last one is explaining the vocabulary you have learned to a friend you have learned a couple of words today and then you can just uh, ask, test your friend or you can explain to them if he cannot answer, if he, cannot, if he doesn't know the meaning of those words. In that way, you, you have an opportunity to recall the meanings of the word and we know that when you teach somebody, you will learn best. Keep these, other, these ways in mind, these ways of, uh, of studying words in mind and try to incorporate, try to practice them day by day you may not uh, practice, you may not uh, want to try out all these uh, techniques right away. But pick and choose interesting ways to study words that will uh, really help you. And uh, you, can, uh, you can achieve learning words very, very quickly. And the next important thing is a uh, few hints on using dictionaries. Let's look into some of the hints or some of the suggestions about using dictionaries. We know that when we're talking about learning new words or difficult words, the important thing that we cannot avoid talking we cannot avoid talking about is dictionary, use of dictionary. Okay? A uh, one uh, person who would like to learn a new words, a number of words must possess a good dictionary. When I ask my students, most of them say that they don't have a good dictionary. Even a couple of them who possess a dictionary, they say that they don't uh, frequently uh, refer, to the, uh, refer to it. So there's no point in doing that. Therefore, uh, a learner, especially who wants to improve his vocabulary, should possess a good dictionary, and that will help him uh, quite a lot. So what is that? It is essential for all the second language learners, especially for the beginners to keep a good dictionary. Okay, if you're a beginner, keep a good dictionary. That will really help you. A good dictionary can be a great help in building up one's vocabulary. Uh, almost all the aspects of vocabulary knowledge. You remember the eight important aspects of word knowledge we talked about in the first episode. I'll help you to recall them. The first one is the meaning of the word. The second one is the written form of the word, that is spelling. The third one is the spoken form of the word, pronunciation. The fourth one is grammatical behavior of the word. Fifth one is collocations of the word. And the sixth one is register of the word. Seventh one is the associations of the word. And the eighth one is the frequency of the word. Eight aspects of vocabulary knowledge. Okay, so it's very uh, important that any good dictionary will be able to give you all these eight aspects. Okay, therefore, uh, I have al I've already told you that eight aspects are very important because that helps us to communicate well, that helps us to function in a different uh, context. Okay, therefore, any good dictionary will give you all these eight aspects in, its, uh, in it. Therefore, uh, possessing a good dictionary is a very important thing. While choosing the dictionary, it's very important to know uh, the level of proficiency one has. And the second thing is that uh, when you want to purchase a good dictionary, you can take the help of uh, your teacher. And uh, it is also uh, important to seek uh, teachers or friends' help when using a dictionary. Suppose when you buy a new dictionary, uh, you may not be able to use it well because you don't know how to use it. Using dictionary is not a, a joke. Uh, it's not a very simple thing. It's not an easy thing. And therefore, there are a number of aspects to learn in it. And there are some certain abbreviations. There are some, uh, some other new aspects which we are not aware of it. Therefore, uh, there is no harm in taking the help of a, a friend or a teacher, okay, so that we can make a better use of the dictionary. 
otherwise there is no point in you know uh, buying a good dictionary and uh, just just confining it to the room or, or shelves all right so uh, some of the good dictionaries are like you know oxford picture dictionaries if you are a beginner you can buy this dictionary you know, for elementary learners uh, next one is oxford learners uh, uh, pocket dictionary okay for intermediate learners if you are if you think you are an intermediate your level is intermediate level uh, then you can go for Oxford Learner's Pocket Dictionary. Oxford Advanced Learner's Dictionary for Advanced Learners. And Cambridge Advanced Learner's Dictionary, it's also for Advanced Learners. And Longman's Active Study Dictionary for Intermediate Learners. So you can choose uh, one of these dictionaries and uh, use them uh, well. Okay, that will really help you. Finally, I would like to suggest you that uh, by using specific and concrete words, okay, uh, we can greatly improve our ability uh, to communicate effectively. And by improving our communication, we will be, uh, we will be far more uh, likely to make a positive impression upon the recipients of our messages. Okay? Whether those messages are delivered orally or uh, in writing. Okay? Whether it's a oral communication or written communication doesn't matter, but it all depends upon the, the effective communication depends upon the, the, the number of right and correct and appropriate words that we choose to use. Okay? And there are also lots of ways in which we can effectively learn new vocabulary and not to have to uh, resort to translation. Some of, some of us think that only translation works better. Immediately you encounter a new word and immediately translate it and then learn it. That's the only way of, uh, that's the only strategy uh, most of the learners, most of the second language learners uh, are, you know, uh, blessed with. But uh, that's not true. We have seen a number of ways to record new words. We have seen a number of ways to learn new words. You can choose, pick and choose whatever is feasible, uh, feasible for you and then use it appropriately, okay? And uh, we have to learn new words in context and take plenty of chances to practice. These are the two important things. When we are learning new words, the context is very, very important thing. Out of context, it's very difficult to learn. We, it's very difficult to learn the meaning of, meanings of the words in isolation. Okay? You try and see that. You try to learn one word in isolation. You try to learn one word in context and see which is better for you, which you can learn quickly. Okay? When we learn words in context, there are a number of things that help us to remember and to learn word. But in isolation, there are no clues. So that becomes very difficult. Therefore, context plays a crucial role. And also, practice. Take plenty of chances to practice. Practice, practice, practice. Practice makes you perfect. Okay? So uh, when we are learning words, don't be too ambitious to learn number of words at one go in a day, as I told you, okay? Learning words happens gradually, day by day, okay? Learning all the eight aspects is not an easy thing. It only happens gradually, day by day. Therefore, focus on all these aspects over a period of time. Give, take some time, okay? And then use a good dictionary, context, and then practice. I hope uh, you have got some idea about uh, how to go about learning uh, new words and difficult words and antonyms, synonyms, homonyms and one word substitutions. And I hope all these things will come in a, in a long way that will really help you. And I wish you all the success in learning new words. Goodbye.